Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. William Penn was an English Quaker who suffered much persecution in his homeland. So in 1682, he sailed to America in search of a new life, free from the hatred and attack of others. And after a meeting with the Red Indians, he named a city that he built on that site as Philadelphia. Philadelphia means a city of brotherly love. This reflected his desire to live on friendly terms with the Indians and also his dream for a city where men might live at peace with one another in spite of their religious differences. However, the original city, given that name, was one of the seven churches of Asia Minor. Now, many share the same longing that William Penn had, that is to live on earth in peace with their fellow human beings. Though many have sought to attain such a utopia, it has always remained just a dream. However, there is coming a time when Jesus will return and reign over the earth. The lion will lie down with the lamb and mankind will transform their instruments of war into implements of agriculture. Only then will there be true, lasting peace on earth. And that's why Jesus alone is called the Prince of Peace. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And thank you for joining us today. It's Phil here, along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And this week, what happens when Jesus comes to church? We're looking at the seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Now, welcome, Ken. We're uh, looking today at uh, the Church of Philadelphia, the letter to them. Yes. Now, this was a good church known for two things that were important to God. First of all, their feebleness or their little strength. Uh, This was not small because they didn't think big, but because of their circumstances. You see, uh, that region around Philadelphia was subject to frequent earthquakes and volcanoes. And due to the frequent earthquakes, it had a small population. Mm. There had been a lot of fatalities. People have moved away, and so it was small. But then the second thing, he says uh, that he commends them for their faithfulness because they'd kept the word of God and had not denied his name. So though it was a not a big church and, and it was poor in wealth, yet it was rich before God. Mm. In the eyes of the world, uh, you know, there wasn't much to look at. But it was like we said yesterday, Gideon's army, just a small band of people that were faithful to God and God could do something with them. You know, I love hearing this background, Ken, because it just brings the story alive, you know, knowing they were in that situation. Imagining myself in that situation, if there were earthquakes and volcanoes near my house, would I want to stay there? But these guys Mm. were faithful to that. And this is the church to which Jesus said something really interesting. He said, I have set before you an open door. What do you mean by that? Well, an open door in the scripture is usually a reference to an opportunity for ministering the gospel and the word of God. Uh, There's a prospect, if you like, of a missionary door set before every one of us. You know, Jesus sets before every one of us open doors. And it's him that does that. He opens doors in response to our faithfulness. This church was faithful, and if we're faithful in the small things, then he'll give us greater responsibilities. I think that's what he was saying. But another thing is this, that it says here that when he opens a door, no one can shut it. I love that. In fact, um, you you read in the book of Acts, you know, that um, God opened this door to the apostles, to the Gentile world. Mm. Up until that point, they'd only gone to the Jews. And they were in that prayer meeting, you remember, at Antioch, and uh, God said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called them to. So they go out preaching to the Gentiles. And then when they came back, they're so excited because so much has happened. And this is what they said, you know, they, they, they rehearsed about how God had opened up this door to the Gentiles. And I guess that door has never been shut because the gospel has gone out to all the world. Yeah, and get back to our point uh, that we just raised earlier, Phil, and that is that God sets before all of us, and, and especially churches, open doors. And uh, it's it's beautiful just to see how many local churches are involved in missions and, and God lays upon the hearts of those churches maybe a nation or a few nations, and they just seem to get a burden uh, for those nations, and then they see the door opening up for that church to pay a part in taking the gospel and the word of God there. I can think of that same thing in my own church where yeah. there's a place in India that is very close to the heart of our church. Now, we don't have Indians in our church, right. and the history of how it came about is absolutely fascinating. It has to be that God put that burden on somebody's heart, and yeah. they shared the vision with the people in the church, they got behind it, and some amazing things have happened in this city in uh, in India. And of course, he has opened the door, you know, exactly. so we don't have to... Uh, open it ourselves. We just knock and, and it shall be open to us. Yeah. And look, we are certainly living in days of great opportunity today yeah. as far as evangelism and world missions are concerned. 
even what we're doing here, talking through Absolutely. the radio, the technology that's available to us, our ability to hop on a plane and go somewhere and send people different places, it's very much a God upon God's heart. It's the Great Commission that Jesus gave to his church and doors are opening for us all over the world. I agree, Phil, and, and you, you see this term over and over again in the epistles and the Acts of the Apostles. But say, for example, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, um, Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he wants to come to them, but he says, I'm not going to because I've got to stay here in Ephesus because a great and effectual door has been opened to me. Now, we read about that in the book of Acts. You know, We saw how Paul went to Ephesus and uh, it was actually the longest place he ever stayed in one city. Mm-hmm. He was there for over three years. Uh, he started preaching in the synagogue. He got thrown out. <laughs> he rented a hall and he started preaching five hours a day for six days a week. Wow. And uh, it just went on and on. It, it was phenomenal. And from that preaching point, out from there, the Bible says that the whole of Asia heard the word of God. There, there were a lot of miracles took place, healings, deliverances. A lot of people renounced their occultism. They had bonfires burning their books and all that sort of thing. So you can understand why Paul was saying, hey, look, I can't come to you now because God's opened this incredible door of opportunity. Kind so, of busy over here. <laughs> yeah, kind of busy over here. I like the, the way you put that. And, and it's like that. I, I think there's a principle here. And it's this, when God opens the door, stay with it as long as it's open. You know, if God's favor and blessing is upon it, don't go to other places. Stay there and just keep working yeah. where God has uh, blessed, you know, that particular ministry. But he upset a few people uh, because yeah. of what he did, didn't he? Yeah. In fact, he says, doesn't he, in Corinthians, he says, a great and effectual door is open to me, but there are many adversaries. Series. Yeah, because he took on this Diana cult, you know, and uh, he wrecked the trade for a lot of people because they made a lot of money out of making these silver gods and so on of, of, of goddesses rather of uh, Diana, and of course he wrecked that. So he got a lot of persecution and a lot of opposition, and I think open doors will always attract opposition. In fact, there's a a, a word in the Chinese language, the word for crisis is actually a combination of two symbols for danger and opportunity. Mm. So it comes sometimes, you know, we see the danger and we run. But often at that point of danger, hey, there's, there's an opportunity here for the gospel and for, for the word of God. It's like that perspective of saying, you know, inside every dark cloud there's a silver lining. Yeah. There's always opportunity there. It doesn't matter what's happening. And maybe God sets before us more open doors than we actually realize. We're kind of blind to it sometimes, do you think? Yeah, well, let's take another time that we we read that phrase in the epistles where Paul actually was writing from prison. And he says in uh, chapter 4 of Colossians and verse 3, he says, Pray for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which he says, I'm in change. Mm. Now, you might think that he was saying, pray that I'll get out of here. (laughs) But he wasn't. He was actually praying, while I'm in here, pray that even though I'm chained, that somehow God's going to open up a door in this place of you know, physical confinement where I can preach the word of God. Well, it just shows how sold out he was to his mission that God had given him. Yeah. And, and in fact, that did happen actually while he was in prison. Um, we read in the Acts of the Apostles that he dwelt two years in his rented house. He was under like his house confinement, if you like, house imprisonment. And, and uh, during those two years, the Jews came, many people came to him, and he was preaching the kingdom of God and preaching the word of God. And, uh, you know, as he said, the word of God isn't bound. I might be bound, mm-hmm. but the word of God isn't bound. There's a great door that's open for me. And I would just encourage our listeners right now, wherever you are, you know, sometimes we can think, feel that the grass is greener on the other side. If only I could go and be a missionary in Brazil or in India or in Africa or something like that. Well, hang on a minute. You know, pray that God would give you right here where you are an open door for the word so that the gospel might have free course. There may be someone that you meet in the next 10 minutes where that is the case. Yeah, I think uh, if we're open for business, then we're candidates to see those open doors and to be used by God to take his good news, to be his ambassadors in those situations. When Jesus Comes to Church, that's the subject of our conversation this week and we'll continue it tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book Grace Roots, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.